I've decided ultimately to come clean. Every single boat that has a couple on board, this is what happens. And anyone who sails with their significant other can relate 100%. And you said no. No, you said do not do that in a boat that you're not familiar with. I always can't say the worst. It's always the skipper's fault. I'm not saying that in a sarcastic manner, although Teresa is scoffing in a sarcastic manner. I did not put my instructions across well enough. I, you weren't giving me clear directions. I wouldn't have done it that way. It's nice that you can sit up here in the morning and have a coffee and just watch everything around you instead of being down below. Good morning, everyone. What a stunningly beautiful morning. Absolutely gorgeous. It's very warm already. Very quiet. No noise apart from some birds. Just lovely. So today, I'm not quite sure what our plan is today, actually. I'm not quite sure that we have one yet. And there's absolutely no wind whatsoever, not a breath. There's a few other anchorages kind of deeper into this waterway that I'd love to explore particularly while the weather's nice. So I think that that's what we'll do. I think that we'll just um, take the boat down, have a little meander, have a little explore and see what we can find. I do love this door. I'm so glad we're getting it on Ruby Rose too. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. We are in a very, very beautiful bay um, called America Bay. And it is just around the corner from Pittwater. After yesterday's hike, we'll be rubbing some soothing balm on our scratches, won't we, <laughs> Teresa? But all those of you who are like, oh, that sounds, you know, that looks a bit dangerous. Yeah, it does. It was bloody dangerous, like snakes and spiders. Oh, stop. Yeah, these things kill you anyway. We were one of three people, like three separate parties, doing that same hike. I've seen Jurassic Park. <laughs> There's always the one at the end that gets... <laughs> oh, the fat guy with the shaving, shaving cream cone. You know you're the dude on the toilet. <laughs> no, it's the bloke who kind of like goes into the point that little thing where the gills turns up and then spits in his face. No, you're, you're like the ranger with the gun who like gets killed by the raptors. Oh, uh, yeah. With the yeah. The badass. Bit. What does he say? What was his last words? Oh, you clever things or something. Clever girl. You clever girl. Yeah, that was me yesterday. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> Clever girl. <laughs> anyway, on with some sailing. quite sailing, we're motor sailing and actually we've just gone downwind so we have no real... We haven't let the sails out. We have one knot of apparent wind. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, we, we got a little sailing breeze just before as we're coming out of the um, of the anchorage and as we manoeuvre um, down the kind of waterway system then we'll probably get another point of sail a little bit later. I'm just going to do a little bit uh, of a behind the scenes of a sailing channel for you. Because uh, I guess the thing is that we've always edited our content to show the reality of what it is to live on a boat. I think from the point of view of uh, us filming, I think it's probably um, you know worthwhile showing you the chaos that goes on during filming days. On table one, we have a drone, phone, 360 degree camera, suction mount. This suction mount is excellent. Inside here, we have our charging stations. So drone batteries, dr drone charger, camera B, laptop for editing, selfie stick, lens one. This is the camera gear we travel with. So 
inside here, road microphone, camera bag A with another set of lenses, gimbal, chargers, studio lighting. In here we've got action cameras. So we are currently after, what this is, almost year four of YouTube, isn't it? Unbelievably, yeah. Unbelievably, four years have passed. We are now carrying about 20 kilos of camera gear. That's without tripods, mini tripods other bits and bobs and a lot of stuff that we left for editing back in Teresa's parents place in Adelaide so yeah it's still enjoyable and I do like the tech I think the new technology that's come through now is absolutely amazing Looks like we've lost the wind. We're going downwind, downwind of the very you know, small amount of wind that we have. Might have to put the sails away in a minute, unfortunately. It was beautiful around here, hey? Hey, Jolie. This is just so remote, and they stick in this national park. There's boys everywhere. We are just surrounded on all sides by these like wooded hills. It's the National Park, it's just stunning. Cannot see the sea, can't see open water at all. You just feel like you're completely surrounded by nature. On the, on the very edge of the field, Moran Field? Yeah. Okay. Oh, like 18? giving me clear directions. I wouldn't have done it that way. I'd do that in a boat that you're not familiar with. I said, should I go in through the boat? All right, well, we had to come to an end our run of success in picking up mooring boys using this boat. It's always the skipper's fault. I'm not saying that in a sarcastic manner, although Teresa is scoffing in a sarcastic manner. I did not put my instructions across well enough and there was a miscommunication. I've been doing this for very, 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 very many years. If you ever try and pick up a mooring boy, not going to Wynwood, you are on a hiding to nowhere and you're going to end up with rope burns. That's just the way it works. It always works. So I think the problem is that we were quite high-sided. We missed the boy. It was coming. It was down the port side. And uh, yeah, we should have just aborted and gone round again. But because it was going down the port side, I picked it up and then tied it off. And I shouldn't have done that. One thing about this boat, which is different to Ruby Rose because of the size and because of the windows and because of everything else, is it is very, very difficult to communicate effectively with your other half while mooring. It's not easy to communicate when the plan is changing. That's a thing. Split second decisions where you decide to do something different, you can't communicate that yeah. particularly well, unless you have those like little radios. Marriage savers they're called. They are actually called marriage savers. I mocked them when I first saw them. I thought I would end up looking at Shania Twain. Oh, after that little spout, we might have to like... Reconsider. So from my point of view, Nick picked the mooring boy and it wasn't the boy that had I been in charge which I'm not it's not the boy I would have gone for but because he's a skipper and what he says goes on this boat if on in no other context but then I am happy I, to be skipper then I said nothing and I went along with it and I followed his instructions to the best of my ability which is obviously not very good it but I did it good. it obviously wasn't because I I had to come past the nose of that boat that you can see behind me. I'm getting the wind is coming from this direction, so I'm getting pushed onto the boat. So I didn't have time or room to turn this boat into the wind to pick up that mooring boy because we were on the mooring boy before I had a chance to do that. No. So that is, in my view, why we picked we we picked the wrong mooring boy. Okay. Anyway. And cup of anyway, tea and a biscuit? Yeah, a cup of tea and a biscuit, please. It's only 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, at a row. <laughs> at a breakfast, a row, and a sale, and done some drone work. Now. By the way, yes, you can pop the cashew on, please. Can I just say that, you know, we might get, I don't know, I'm still deciding how much of that 
I'm going to actually put on to the internet because I think that probably, all of it. <laughs> I think probably it does not show us in our best light. So I might have edited that slightly. On every boat, every single boat that has a couple on board, this is what happens. And anyone who sails with their significant other can relate 100% to having a spat when mooring up. We see it all the time. And I think a lot of you are probably laughing to yourself, even as you might feel a little bit uncomfortable at the sight of us having a bit of a... To do. A bit of a to do. Anyway, five minutes later, the teapot's on and the marital bed is warm. <laughs> <laughs> the marital bed. Did you make the marital bed? Yeah, I've got rose petals all over No, you didn't. You left it in a big mess. Anyway. Sorry about that, people. I think that it's fair to say we don't do that very often. All right, we're gonna go ashore, see what we can find. We're gonna get rid of the bins and ideally pick up like some, just some bread and some basics. We do still have food, but it's running a bit low. Now, because we are consummate professionals, uh, we've come out um, with the flat battery in our camera. No one knows to know these things. That's okay. That's where phone cameras um, come in handy. So we are at this lovely, lovely, lovely little cafe, kiosk, store, Chandler's, boat, Chandler's, boat hire shop. Um, have I missed anything? All in one, which is just so charming to me. I love that. I love just these random little places and they have like one place that does, like one shop or whatever that just does everything, a bit of everything. Rises of the Caribbean was saying. Yeah, like, a lot. With just like the couple of shelves of like groceries, a couple of little cleaning products. We'll have, we'll have lunch out because we, you know, don't have much on board. So we'll have lunch here. We'll start off with a little drink, wait for their uh, kitchen to open for lunch. Have lunch and then have go lunch? back to another place for yeah. this afternoon. We're good. Now we are going to go and find somewhere to spend the night. The weather is really starting to become very close. You know, it's starting to become really muggy and murky and you can, it's very, very hot and you can feel that there's some uh, weather on the way. Definitely starting to look quite gray over there. Feels like it's gonna rain. One thing that I debated telling you and I've decided ultimately to come clean is that when we were picking up the mooring ball before in our first stop of the day where we had our little spat, I, as I said at the time, had to kind of come past the nose of quite a big motorboat. And I felt at the time like I was getting pushed onto the motorboat and that was where the wind was coming from. But <laughs> I'm almost, I always can't say the word. So we tied up and Nick says, you know, you should have just done this. And I said, no, nah, I felt like I was getting pushed onto this boat. And after we kind of made up and said our apologies for losing our tempers with each other, I looked up through the window and 
it turned out that we'd left the mainsail off. <laughs> I forgot to take the mainsail down. Everyone makes these like hilariously stupid mistakes when they're sailing. Everyone, er everyone who's ever owned a boat has, has done something that they just can't believe that they did because it's just so absurd and absent-minded and ridiculous. You know, I wanna hear your stories. I want you guys, if you don't mind, I'd love to hear your stories. It would definitely give me and everyone else a laugh of like really absent-minded, stupid things that you did while on a boat or while sailing that you can't believe that you did, but we all make these stupid mistakes. So tell me your embarrassing stories down below. I, I won't judge. This is a judgment-free zone. It's raining. I don't mind it. I think the rain is very beautiful in its own special way. So it would appear that summer is finally over. It looks as if the weather is, has passed through and the weather forecast for the coming days, weeks is not particularly good. We can get about a five to 10 day accurate forecast, but every day says rain of which a couple of those days are gonna be torrential. And when it rains here, it really rains. Hmm. Hmm. Now, we have a selection of beers. For whatever reason, something to do with my ever-expanding waistline, we decided to take, well, I decided to take some time away from alcohol. So I think I'll have an alcoholic beer today. Cheers. And we only made one selling mistake today. But it's a big one. Yeah, I told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Why is the boat going sideways? Clowns, a pair of clowns we are sometimes. I would say I can't believe we did that, but I can't believe we did that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this week's episode. And uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. And if you want to be notified when we release a new episode, then you just need to click the notification bell. See you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.